Hi, this is Di, and I am at Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport. I have a disease called von Lindau, and I'm gonna take you along with me to NIH about what it's like to be a research participant, and what are all the updates on my disease. I've been taking a miracle drug. the trickiness of being a research participant at NIH is getting from Seattle to Bethesda. Yesterday my flight was delayed two hours. We actually had to change planes. I got in so late that I stopped to eat dinner and when I got to the walking part from my subway, the metro here, to my Airbnb, it was dark. I got to the airport at 6.30 in the morning and I got to the Airbnb at 9 p.m. with no car. And this morning I locked myself out of the bedroom and had to call the owner to figure out how to unlock the door. I'm running late. I'm hoping to pick up my 24-hour urine bag and get to ophthalmology. <laughs> In my 20 years of coming to NIH for tests, I've only once been inside of one of these neat brick houses. Uh, I've been in hotels all the rest of the time, and that was just for a dinner. I always wanted to be in one of these houses, and by staying in an Airbnb this time, I finally get to find out what it's like to be in an actual neighborhood. It's 1.35 and I am home from NIH for the day. Today was just ophthalmology, but how come it's always so much more? Anyway, I had hoped to get some fruit from the phlebotomy stand where they have fruit for people and it was gone. It looked like a pack of ravenous wolves had eaten all the treats. All I could have gotten was a juice and I don't need the extra sugar, so I just drank water. So then I went and picked up my 24-hour urine kit. I have an entire video about how to do the 24-hour urine jug. I think it's, 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 it's an eye in the sky. So then I made my way to ophthalmology. I was early. They took one set of pictures of my eyes and then they took the optos pictures. And then I got to see a fellow and then I got to see the doctor and I have some audio from the fellow and from the doctor. I wasn't there last time, so it could be a, a blood, like a bleeding or blood clot, or it could be something small starting. I'd have to double check now. Your eyes are dry a bit. Yeah. These drops were there. It wasn't bothering me till today. I don't, I don't need them usually. Okay, if you do need, we can prescribe you. I'm just seeing there was a lesion described before. Yeah, there was one in the left eye, but disappeared, and today it's not there yet. But no. it's not back. You still have like a heart, a little heart. Yes, it looks much flatter. 
It does look like a tiny thing there. I'm not sure if it's blood or vessel because they're mm. both red. We can just watch it for now. When is your next time here? Maybe a year or? In a year, but I'll see the doctors in Seattle in six months. And do they do the same as we do? Yep. Okay. Everything else is looking stable. So this little red spot that we're seeing, it could be like the beginnings of a lesion, or it could also be just like um, a spot of brain that we see off, you know, often associated with diabetes, high blood pressure, but sometimes associated with just like coughing or straining. I would say it's a bit unusual. Um, you know, even though the medication's relatively new, I really haven't seen patients on the medication develop new lesions. Okay. All the lesions that I've seen have really regressed and the small ones like kind of go away completely. So it's a little bit, you know, I think unlikely, but of course we're still learning more about the medication. So if that didn't make sense to you, my left eye, which had been previously lasered, is doing fine. One of the tumors there has actually vanished which was great. It was a little heart-shaped one that we were keeping track of and seeing if it grew, and it is gone. And there was no change in the previously lasered tumor in my left eye. However, there was a new spot on my right eye. This is my right eyeball. And that's the spot they saw. I'll be going to see a doctor in Seattle about that in six months, and they'll see if there's any change. She asked me if I'd strained it all, and a couple of days ago, I did try an at-home yoga video, so that could be it. I don't know. And then he said my eyes were really dry, which they were really super stingy from the drops, so I guess that was true. He said that I could have some eye drops, and he put them in as a prescription. So I went down to pick up the prescription, and they gave me this. This humongous box that doesn't expire for a year. 50 vials of the drops. These would cost good money at home. I'm pretty excited that they gave me so many. I mean, it's a lot to carry back on an airplane. I had wanted to go do some fabulous touring around, at least making it into Bethesda today, but it's raining. And you would think being from Seattle, I'd be prepared, but um, it doesn't rain here. So I just brought a hat and wore the hat. And now I kind of don't want to leave and be in the rain. The rain is supposed to stop at 7 p.m. So I will eat my dinner here tonight. I bought something at NIH. And then I will head out to the grocery store because I have a full kitchen here. Sure makes the 24-hour year and easier to collect. So this is new. There is a tunnel between NIH and Walter Reed Medical Center so that you can go between them without crossing the busy intersection. And so far, I'm the only one I've, I think I've ever seen one other person use the tunnel. So unless somebody kills me here, it was a great idea. So today, is Tuesday of my trip. I left on Sunday, I had tests on Monday. Today is audiology and MRI, abdominal MRI. Well, I made it to drop off my 24-hour urine jug and had sort of a fail. One, they had total chaos going on back there. There was a little girl screaming and three people in the room where I was supposed to go. It was just chaotic, but anyway, so I bring my own bag and it started leaking water on me. I'm throwing it away. I put it in the trash. No reason to take that back to Seattle with me. It was really cheap, so I will try to buy one that retains water next time. So audiology is next. And then I have to do my blood draw and my urine test to make sure I'm not pregnant. <laughs> I'm supposed to drink lots of water, so hopefully I can fill up my bladder during audiology and then go do the blood work. Maths are required in patient areas now, so figure that one out. And just like that, I finished audiology and I went in and did my blood work and my pregnancy test. She was quite the character in audiology. We'll go over my results when I get home and I can pull them out and show them to you. I have a three o'clock MRI. Oh,
It is day three at NIH, Wednesday. I am making my way onto campus for my appointment with my ear doctor. Let him update me on the results of that audiology test so I can get them to you. And I forgot my wristband, I had to go back for it, so I'm late. Now I'm walking back in the rain. So apparently last week my doctor decided to be gone this week. So his nurse contacted my nurse, said she would take care of it. And then yesterday I saw the audiologist and I said, do I see the doctor today? And she said, no, you're gonna see him tomorrow. Which was not true, he's not in. And let's be clear, there was not one email, not one message in the patient portal, not, not a phone call, nothing. Yesterday I walked 10,000 steps. It looks that way again today. <laughs> and I'm on my way back. Because I still have an appointment with urology. And an MRI of my brain and spine. So lots more to do. It's just in the afternoon today. At NIH, there are different studies for different body parts. And I'm affected in a lot of different areas of my body with von Hippolindau disease. Von Hippolindau disease, let's see if I can pronounce it after 20 years. So I have tumors and other lesions in my brain, spine, eyes, ears, kidneys, and pancreas. Each of that is a different clinic. So I am in five clinics at NIH. On this trip, I'm seeing four. The pancreas clinic decided that they could see me in the lower level going up. They could see me every two years. I made all my arrangements through the urology clinic, and that's what I'm going to see today. Neurological surgery coordinated the other part of my care. And those two studies pay two different amounts for my reimbursement on my hotel. That's something to remember if you come to NIH as a patient, that if you're in multiple studies, those are different payment rates with vouchers. So there are a number of people who we treat who have one tumor growing or two tumors growing, but the rest are, are stable on Belzutifan, where we say, okay, we'll go in, we'll remove those tumors, let you recover it, and then we can consider restarting Belzutifan again. And then we can revisit. And generally what we do is at three months afterwards, do that repeat MRI um, and kind of see how everything is looking, and that can become like the new baseline. Right. And then the decision we made, you know, is it worth restarting Belzutifan versus waiting? At the time frame you're looking at it, September is very reasonable. Nothing's going to happen in the next few. I, I would not wait like, I mean, I, I would avoid waiting a year or two years or things right, like that. Right. But a few months here is nothing. Yeah. So sometimes you don't feel like being on camera. I have to have kidney surgery. And I'm done for the day at NIH. On my 10th year, I got to have brain surgery. <laughs> For my 20th, I get kidney surgery. My urology appointment did not go the way I hoped. 
I have two tumors at three centimeters, which is the rule for surgery. And yes, the tumors that I get in my kidneys are cancer. They're called renal cell carcinoma. And so it, we have to get them out before they spread. Should this be happening on well rig? No, but it is. So we're gonna deal with reality and that's the reality. And sometimes in reality, things don't go the way they should or we'd rather them though. So gonna make the best out of it. I pushed it out to September after several life events here. Uh, I should show you the Airbnb before I leave. Getting ready to go, so my luggage is here, but here's the couch. It's got a cool shelf above it. If you like Jackson Galaxy and you had a cat, this would be a great shelf for a cat. There's a few books on the shelf and an air conditioner, which would have been handy if it had been a lot warmer. It was not warm. And this is the kitchen. And it's got everything, including stuff in the door and, and sodas. There's a TV and chocolates. A full bathroom with a shower and a tub. And my bedroom, which has cuter pillows and cuter blankets, but I go for warmth. This is cool. Drawers. Doors. The cutest little nook I put my suitcase in. I really like staying here better than the hotel. It's 0.8 miles from the door of this to one of my doctor's offices and I can get there in 35 minutes through security and everything so I'm hoping to do this again. Look at the tiles. I'm gonna go back to Seattle but tomorrow I have the voucher's office and neurosurgery. So we have to go vouchers, neurosurgery, vouchers again, because you turn in your paperwork and then you gotta pick up your check. Vouchers, neurosurgery, vouchers, and then the shuttle for my flight. Every clinic's been weird this trip, so let's hope that it's kind of normal this time. I'd really like a nice normal appointment. I could use good news. Keep smiling, keep smiling, keep smiling, ah! Okay, down below in the comments, leave for me. How do you balance a positive reframe? Like, yeah, I have to have a horrible surgery, but look at it. I live in a day and age where I can have that ro surgery robotically with one of the most skilled physicians in the world at doing that surgery. Like, how privileged am I? Like so much privilege and I should be grateful for that. Absolutely. Which is a great positive reframe. However, there is toxic positivity. How do you balance that? I don't want to be the person who says everything's great. Everything's wonderful. Everything's lovely. And it's not because I'm talking to a camera. I have to tell you that my life is perfect when it is not. How do you balance positive reframes and toxic positivity? I want you to tell me down in the comments if you've made it this far in this video. Last day of this trip of NIH. And yes, I have to bring all of my luggage with me the whole day. So I can go to the airport and fly home tonight. Because they won't give me one more night's hotel or let me just pay for one more night. I'm good, how are you? Um, I'm well, your scans look fantastic. Oh, yay. Yeah. Have you seen them at all? No. Do you want me to show them? That would be yeah. awesome. Your tumors are actually shrinking. That tumor was something that we were watching. Right. It's at the brainstem. It's yes, smaller. that central line one. This is right yeah. after oh. you started, right before you started Bazilka, and this is last year, and this is now. I noticed that edema has gone down. Yeah. I think I feel better because of that. Right. Is that possible? Yeah, it is possible. Okay. And then your spine was not worrisome. So now in the brain, you have a few other locations yeah. that we were monitoring, and all of those are either stable or small. So overall, nothing to worry about from our end. I don't know if you caught everything the doctor said, but my 
spine tumors are stable and my brain tumors are shrinking. There was a midline tumor they were worried they were gonna have to operate on. One of the doctors there actually said I needed surgery for it and I postponed it, thank goodness. The medication, Belgiazan, well, right, it's working for my brain. I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm gonna have to be off the medication for three months in order to have this surgery. Deprives your cell of oxygen. So your cells probably need it to recover from surgery, but the doctor seemed to think it was going to be okay since I've already made so much headway on my brain and spinal cord. The bottom line for me is that today's a better day than yesterday. So I'll be scheduling surgery in the fall. Time to do the right kidney.